Yes, my hair is a tiny bit pink. My scalp is a lot of bit pink. Hello, hello, this is Budgets with Grace, where I give you a glimpse of my life using the lens of my budget. My name's Grace. One thing that me and my partner have been, I don't wanna say struggling with, but something that I have felt the struggle of trying to explain some of the more methodology of using a budget like YNAB, um, Hey, break it up. Playtime's getting a little rough. So I wanted to create a resource for couples like me and my boyfriend who are beginning to use split expenses or maybe for couples who have even been just getting into budgets together and need a quick guide, a quick reference to use to talk through it and to understand your options as a couple. Quickly, I wanna give a little bit of clarification about some of the methodology of YNAB, specifically accounts versus budgets. And this is hard for a lot of people to grasp, especially if they're used to budgeting in a more traditional sense of using forecasting and doing a monthly budget where at the beginning you say that you'll get paid, you know, X amount, uh, maybe twice a month, and then you budget for the amount you'll get paid. YNAB just uses the value in your account to budget. So the accounts that you have, you can have many accounts linked to YNAB, and it's a monetary value that's held in an institution, cash or credit quick, like you can have other means of an account. You can have a tracking account that's more like an investment. But for the sake of simplicity, those are the essential accounts that you can have linked to your budget. I mentioned credit, like this could be a credit card that has a negative value. I want to specify that. And then the difference between these accounts that have a monetary value that are within your budget, your budget is a list of action items or YNAB, Jesse Meekum will call them jobs for your dollars. But the idea is that all of these accounts add up to a total sum and then your budget gives all of those dollars a job or some kind of action that you need them to do for you before you get paid the next time. This is the method that can really help you break the paycheck to paycheck cycle. I can make a whole nother video about this. And so I'm going to stop here and get into the nitty gritty. The first method you can use to budget as a couple is just a simple split. This is the method that my boyfriend and I use, and it's working well for us as an unmarried couple who we don't have any joint accounts. We are legally separate entities. So as you can see, I've set up an account that is just my money and it's filled with $530. So I'm going to budget for half the rent, which I've set up a goal of 1000 and 30 for groceries. Now I'm going to suppose that my partner gives me an inflow for rent and they'll be giving us half the rent. And so now you can go back into your budget and budget the remaining rent value and you've reached the goal for your rent. But let's say that you go to the grocery store and you want to charge a split transaction, the outflow for the total groceries, let's say was 45. So it's gonna be split between your groceries and uh, again, simplicity, let's just do half. So I'm gonna use this box to do a math, to do a math, <laughs> this box to do a calculation. And when I press enter, it does the half, the, it did the math. 2250 is the remaining and we don't have a category for this. So I'm going to add one. And we also need a new category group. So the category group will be split spending, let's call it. 
And the category name will be, I will just call it partner. You could get, call it by your partner's name. You could call it something else, <laughs> whatever you want. Save that. So now you can see that the amount that we've budgeted for on our side of this um, we still have a little bit left over for groceries, but we have a negative value where um, our partner is. So we're not going to budget for this. We're going to charge, charge our partner. And instead of putting this into to be budgeted, we're going to put it into their personal category for split spending. And let's say that you charge them for... Again, like simplicity, and you just charge them 25. And now in the budget, oops, I did it wrong. Now in the budget, um, your partner has 250, and this is kind of like a holding account for them. Like, obviously, if you're in it for the long haul, you're gonna go grocery shopping, and eventually that 250 will just roll over into the next haul that you do, and um then you just charge them 250 less or whatever next time. So the resource that I've made to show you this method is called the easy split. And you can see right at the top, it says that you transfer to your separate accounts to cover your split expenses. And this can go both ways. For me, it's easiest for me to charge a flat rate rent which covers the uh, actual mortgage as well as some utilities and things like that that are regular monthly expenses. In addition to that flat rate rent, I will charge for whatever uh, split of groceries makes sense. Uh, not usually half, usually when I'm grocery shopping at Trader Joe's, most of it's for me, but usually like maybe 30% of that grocery shopping. This is the next part that can really help clarify that account versus budget stuff I was talking about in the beginning. You can see that there's a top layer of icons and there's a bank, a credit card, and a dollar. And all of those accounts go into a YNAB budget. As a couple, you can easily share an account and I would definitely recommend it so you can save and only pay half as much instead of both paying for a subscription. So with that one YNAB account, you can have multiple budgets. You can, as far as I know, have infinity budgets and uh, it, it's a great way for you to manage your finances effectively in terms of the cost of the software. The next method that I want to talk about for couples who budget together is a pool budget. This is what I would recommend for a married couple. This is like my ultimate couple finance goals is to have joint accounts that you spend the majority of your split expenses out of and you just treat all of your money as our money instead of his and her money or insert the correct genders for your partnership. So as you can see, partner one is bringing in 760 while partner two is bringing in 300. This doesn't matter. It's all our money. So for this, I'll approve these, go into the budget. And first off, they're going to budget again for that thousand dollar rent. And then instead of a $30 groceries, it would be 60 since now they're just pulling out of that one category. I'm going to edit the goal and make it 60. And now let's say that partner one gets their next payday and back in the budget, we'll make a new category. I think I'll just call it no questions. And in here we'll put partner one, partner two. And these are going to be the allowance categories is a good way to think of it. So I'll fund each of these 150. So a lot of couples might stop here and just be adding transactions and charging those transactions to these categories. I would recommend doing it a little bit differently. So we're going to pay partner one no cues. And it will come out of their partner one. And we'll do the same thing for partner two. 
So what I just did is I transferred the money out of the account that is linked to this budget. For this method, you're still going to maintain your separate budgets from each other. They're just going to become really minimal in comparison to your joint budget. In your joint budget, it's going to be all of your split things, probably like housing or whatever, um, pets, like whatever you share. But I think it's important to maintain a little bit of independence and also like maybe a little bit of fun secrecy for the holidays if you budget enough for each other to do that sort of thing. So when you transfer the money out of this joint account um, into your separate budgets, you can do whatever you want with it and it's no questions asked. To represent this method, I made a graphic called a big pool. And as you can see up the top, there are still those same icons, but they're all mixed together. All um, partner one and partner two become joint accounts. But when it goes through your joint YNAB budget and it goes into those two categories for partner one and partner two, it's actually filtered through those separate accounts that are not linked to the first budget. It's not important that you get this at a different bank or you um, have it as a completely separate account from your partner. It could still technically be a joint account. It's just a matter of where, of what budget that account is living in. It can't exist in both. That's pretty key. This is a lot of information to digest. I hope that I've been able to explain it clearly and I've done it my best. And uh, if you want to get your hands on these resources, I've made a digital copy that looks exactly like what I've shown in this video. And I've also made a more printer friendly copy so you don't completely kill your printer if you want to print this out for a conversation with your partner. So you can find those with the link below in Buy Me a Coffee. They're free. And of course, you can support my channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, all the things. And I'll catch you next time. Bye. Oh, yeah. Also, my hair is pink because I used my last bit of overtone. I used the rose gold for brown hair. I've only bought it once and I'm not going to do it again, but it's fun for what it is. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, all the things, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.